Hey guys, welcome to the winner's match of Hasu League from BSL Season 12, Group D. Stay cool. Uh, as I'm casting this on Twitch, I know there's a big heat wave in the Northwest. It seems like there's just heat everywhere. Global warming starting to kick in. Hopefully this will... Uh, hopefully this will get people people's butts in gear regarding global warming. Speaking of global warming, we have Frost starting at the bottom right-hand corner. <laughs> as the Orange Terran, a.k.a. Joserg. I'm just going to call him Frost, because that's a little bit easier than referring to someone as Joserg when they're Terran. This is on Tau Cross, upper right-hand corner we have Doodle. Very solidly taking... Honestly, through. it feels like there was just a lot... In Doodle's play, it's interesting, where it feels like he's got a lot of awesome aggression early game, but it he has some trouble doing some of the, mic the the macro things, at least. And then he, like, somehow, it's like a switch kind of goes off. It's like a slow dial, actually. And it's like the dial moves to macro, and then it's almost the uh, the flip, where he does very, very well at macro, but has some trouble getting some army cohesion in the mid-game. But the way that ends up playing out is he ends up disrupting his opponent right at the beginning, and then having a lot of follow-up in solid play after that. Uh, and just out macroing his opponents, essentially. Barrickson is kind of. I always wonder about these off center DB, uh, depot DB, depot uh, barracks placements. We're not seeing a blockade on the front door from Frost. We are seeing a gateway and an assimilator warping in, so no two gate opening for Doodle. This is a rampless map, Tau Cross, with that gap, the natural expansion. We also seeing a refinery plopping down. I have a feeling, just because of the nature of this map, we might see. Two factory play opening from Frost. It looks like he is scouting to the upper left first, as is Doodle. Both players will come across each other a little bit later as a result. Mostly I feel like this map just favors, because of the lack of ramp, favors ground forces, at least early gateway forces, a little bit more than other maps. Cybernetic score warping in on that back corner for Doodle. Pylon as well. And we do see three SCV on gas. And we'll see if they get pulled off. Another depot being kind of the... Yeah, this is kind of where the interesting grouping is to deal with that initial zealot. Frost, I believe, is a Peruvian Terran. So I think there's a decent amount of lag between these two as well. First factory down. Only one SCV on gas. So it looks like it's going to be an attempt at one factory into expand. Probe being... Escorted back, only sees that initial Marine and doesn't really have any additional scouting information. SCV making its way to the upper left. Dragoon's about halfway finished. And we do see range being upgraded here from Doodle. Question for Doodle now. I always feel like this is kind of the, oh, probe actually able to sneak around. It's going to wander up. It's going to, oh, is it going to be able to see the factory at least? It's going to be able to see the factory. Trying to go into this upper hand corner to kind of end around to go ahead and get a look at that gas line. We're gonna go ahead and keep on Doodle Vision here. Doodle Vision, unfortunately, not able to get everything he was looking for. SCV in the main of Doodle's base. Gonna get an Eiffel. And with that, actually, with that kill and the seeing just a single gateway currently with that Dragoon and that range being built, he's gonna go ahead and take his expansion before that factory's even finished. Actually, just as that factory is being finished. Plopping down a machine shop to follow. And building a bunker right on the front. Additional gateway now plopped down for Doodle. Let's see if he opts for just two gate into expand or if he's going to go ahead and apply some pressure on this front. He does have that range, so he's going to be able to hammer away at that bunker and at least get a, free, a few free minerals that way. First tank on the way. Siege tech should be to follow. SCV's back on gas. And the barracks kind of floating out here. This is the danger town thing for Frost, though. Is he's only got two two marines here at the main, and with two gateways, that's enough dragoons where they should be able to come out to the natural expansion. That tank might end up being a little bit exposed. An SCV has snuck out. It should be able to see that nexus warping in. And Frost actually opting to not go ahead and get the free mineral attack on that bunker. As a result, that tank is going to be able to get in position. Frost and a bit of supply cap, I think, just for a half second right there. Now, able to wander in, but not before this tank is able to rejoin. There were already two SCVs to engage this. Frost actually showing, like, some good mental education around 
build order, was able to peek at that natural expansion, see that Nexus SCV coming home, as the, and the Dragoon's just going to let it happen. Doodle, you going to get it? Okay. And not opting to take some of those pot shots against that tank. We see a robotics facility to follow for Doodle. No additional gateways, or sorry, gateways. No additional factories, but we do see mines being upgraded and an engineering bay. So it looks like Frost feels like he was going to go up against maybe some early Dark Templar play, something along those lines potentially, because he's already getting mines and vultures, but only with one factory to deal with any. Maybe this is just... I'm wondering what gave him an idea that he was going up against Dark Templar. Apologies for that message. Be sure, by the way, everybody, if you are on here for two hours, you need to spend, you need at least be five hours off your computer to get back to balance. Tanks running down some Dragoons on the front with the four Marines. I think this is enough Dragoons to go ahead and chew this one tank down. The Marine's going to get picked off as well with that range. Yeah, I'm, I might go for a... I'm thinking about... I've been uh, doing a lot of hiking. I might go for a hike after this. Bit of interruption here. Proxy Pylon for Doodle. Is he going to go ahead and just try to take this inside third and rely on that? Looks like the Vulture has managed to sneak by. Keep in mind, it doesn't have speed. Finally, an additional factory being plopped down for Frost. There's still two siege tanks at his main and a decently held front door. A lot of turrets, so he's not going to have to worry about any form of drop, but... Looks like it was observatory first and no drop intended from Doodle. It's going to have plenty of Dragoons to deal with this Vulture on the front. And keep in mind, he's going to have... What is he going to be able... He's going to try to micro his way to that mine. Ends up... I think he took some damage with that initial Dragoon. Actually, might be able to sneak down and see this pylon. Already has a mine to go ahead and blockade that third. I think these pylons might be in position upon seeing that Vulture. So I feel like both players kind of like, what is the other one up to? Because I think these proxy pylons for Doodle might have been to deal with a, a drop, comparatively, upon seeing that initial vulture kind of sneaking through. Kind of odd decision to go ahead and get early mines. Again, I think he thought he was going up against something like a Dark Templar. Maybe he was thinking, okay, maybe I'll get something uh, pushwise done. This turret placement, actually, for Frost, disrupting, for a moment, gas collection... Second gateway up, some additional vultures being produced. Finally, Siege Tech being upgraded. Sorry, three factories here and a starport. Level 1 weapons on the way. So Frost sitting back and starting to move back in towards this. This is kind of, I'm going to be honest, kind of odd build order all the way around uh, from Frost. We see that 3 o'clock base. This feels like a, maybe a delay, maybe settling back into the level 2 weapons uh, thing from there. And just going to play, I don't know, either the 11 minute... With, and we'll see if additional factories are plopped down to kind of follow this up. He's getting a second machine shop to fill in that tank count. So it's possible we'll see that 11 minute uh, push. Also control tower. So it looks like he is in fact opting to perhaps go for some early vulture drops. Although I have seen many times in the past recently where they grab the control tower. But in fact do not opt for going a drop ship. Honestly it just feels like a waste of uh, gas. But that is going, and keep in mind, this is well before Weapons 2 is coming online. And we do see Vulture Speed being upgraded. So, Frost, yeah, opting to be the aggressor here. Gateway, count at 4. We also see the Robotic Support Bay with Shuttle Speed, a Citadel of a Dune, being upgraded as well. So the Shuttle and Reaver might come into play. Huge Pylon Wall at that bottom right-hand location to box in that 3 o'clock base for Doodle, and this is also a base that's being taken in there. We do see a drop that I missed. Going to be able to take that siege tank on the low ground, and honestly, <laughs> these turrets not going to cut it. Tanks coming off the front. SCV's already evacuating towards the main. A couple vacant reaver shots, and Doodle, not microing this a little bit, is might end up losing his Dragoon and might end up losing his reaver as a result. Finally able to scoop up that reaver. So a bit of economic disruption, taking out a couple turrets. I don't think he got any SCV kills out of it. But doing that while he's establishing that 3 o'clock, this almost feels like the drop was there to kind of keep keep Frost back, keep him in his base while that 3 o'clock base is up and running. We're we going to see cannons here at that main? Looking for cannons. There are a handful of Dragoons. The Vulture is not going to be able to sneak across. I think they see that free pylon. 
Compsat finally up, a couple Compsats. We do have this dropship, and it's interesting that these vultures are moving on the ground while that dropship is in play. Frost, I gotta, I gotta say it, he's just, I feel like his attack force is also very thin. With kind of going everything at once here, he's even loading one siege tank into this group. That's only three siege tanks on the ground. An additional factory being plopped down. I don't think he's going for, I don't, this does not feel like any sort of general timing attack. I think he's just kind of just going for the upgrades rather than sitting back, trying to do some harassment, trying to do multiple things at once. Does have the science facility hit the level two weapons. Siege tank making with the two vultures meandering around. Another drop with reavers. Shell taking a little bit of damage on that turret. Looks like it was a, a double drop. Actually, it might have just been a fairy. Doodle able to scoop up those two reavers again. A lot of damage on both those shuttles. But here's the thing. If he had another attack force at the front, I don't think he realizes how how thin this defense force is. Because that's only, what, four siege tanks? Four siege tanks to defend all of this. And a siege tank dropping into the main. There is a single dragoon to engage there. It looks like they're going to go to the high ground. This is kind of a feature of Tycross. I should have mentioned earlier. Keep in mind, there's plenty of shuttles to go ahead and counter drop this. But there are going to be vultures out there all over the place. Maybe just the reinforcing units will be able to take care of this for Doodle. Unfortunately, yeah, he's spawning right... So one one Dragoon eating that mine, able to take things out otherwise, and it looks like the, the Reaver is very rapidly able to pounce on top of that dropship on the high ground. So not much accomplished. The Siege Tank count now starting to fill out a little bit better. We do see that fifth factory being plopped down. Level 2 weapons on the way. This is usually where you would see that 11 minute, 12 minute in this instance timing attack with that level 1 weapons. It's possible we'll see that from Frost. He does have this, here's the thing, he's got this third base that he's walking out here to, what is that? So this is 6, 7, kind of 8 o'clock, inside 8, the inside 8 o'clock base. But I just don't think he has the, he's going to try to attack, I guess, to try to defend this. Because otherwise I just don't feel like he has enough raw units, comparative to Doodle, to defend this base. A lot of Dragoons and Zealots making their way forward. They do not have weapons upgrade, critically. And they don't have, like, Arbiter support. I don't think that Zealots are leg speed upgraded. They do have those... There should be another shuttle here, unless that was taken out somewhere in the evening time. There's still that shuttle with speed and no Goliaths to defend, provide any defense otherwise. So that's Reaver slash potential Zealot bombs to follow this up. Doodle running in. The Zealots able to get on the Siege Tanks very, very rapidly, crushing this otherwise. Yeah, and this was my concern for Frost. Let's see if these Reavers are able to get on this pocket of Siege Tanks to that left-hand corner. The Dragoons initially engaging those vultures in that siege tank to the south. And now, yeah, able to, while those siege tanks are distracted, wipe those siege tanks out. And keep in mind, it is only going to be reinforcing siege tanks from here inside Frost's base. He cannot hold, yeah, already drawing back that three o'clock base. Doodle committing hard, seeing only one siege tank there. The Reaver dropping in the natural expansion, all sorts of SCVs. He, honestly, Frost was lucky that more SCVs did not explode with that. And pocketing back into defensive mode, still... So what is this? Three siege tanks? Four siege tanks, period. Versus what level of production here in the background? One, two, three. So what is this? Three, five, nine. Nine gateways. And all sorts of zealots on the ground that if they had that zealot leg speed would have already been that natural expansion. A couple mines being planted down from Frost. Frost greedily trying to reestablish this three o'clock base is going to be able to... He has a Wraith out, of all things, to try to deal with this Reaver. That actually might be successful. But honestly, I still feel like he's playing Danger Town here, where he's just over overreaching at all locations, does not have enough to defend. Doodle, I feel like he's got the prerogative to go ahead and expand, attack, do whatever he wants with this map. Doodle, is, or Frost, is really pinned back into his base. Level 1 weapons coming online for him. Frost dropping... A third machine shop. He's at six factories. Is that six? Six, yeah. Level two weapons coming online. Level one uh, armor is still working its way. So he does have the upgrades. Does have some mines in the forward position, but is still very, very light on units overall. Doodle starting to clear things out. Doodle with a bit of hesitancy here in the interim. He has macroed up, and like I talked about, that dials all the way to macro now. 
where he is getting close to that 200 supply mark. Working on some size storm, it looks like he wants to just do it with gateway units. And if he wants to go gateway man, he will be able to pull this off. But here's the thing, he's allowing Frost to sneak in this match by taking this third base uncontested. Dropship sneaking to the north with some vultures. It looks like Doodle is going to go ahead and take that 12 o'clock base. That Wraith still kind of out around. That Observer sees it too. It's the other critical thing. But maybe Doodle is happy to just go ahead and take some general bases. Maybe he's going to just push to Arbiter Tech from here, plopping down additional two gateways. So he's going to be at the full 12 gateway, gateway man style. Does have two shuttles, a huge Zealot army here on the front. Maybe waiting for upgrades to follow this up. I think he's concerned about that timing push, but that timing push is going to be very, very delayed comparative to when it would be hit. Level 3 weapons working on the way. And also, Frost is not setting himself up for that. He's setting himself up to just sit back, hit the 200 supply mark, and honestly play it from there. And usually when you're doing Refugee Toss, you want to have the Arbiters or something to slow that, basically have Stasis, something along those lines to, to slow that Terran army down. Zealots loaded up in the shuttle. This is three shuttles. Interesting. Three shuttles worth of Zealots to do Zealot Bombs. Not a full controlled group of Dragoons, but a lot of Dragoons. And a big grouping of Zealots otherwise. As far as an attack force from Doodle. Looks like the rest of the Dragoons are coming from the north. They're starting to look for places to encroach. We do see that Wraith might be able to swing all the way around. It is Wow, this entire army descending towards that 9 o'clock. So that is going to be the engagement point. There's not, this is going to be, if you look at the lateral marginal style line here, it is kind of expecting a direct, uh, an attack from that direction. Unfortunately, it's coming from the left, and that is going to force Frost to either re-engage these siege tanks or reinforce from a position that he might not have been prepared for. The Zealot's not in front. It's Dragoon's leading. So Doodle having a little bit of, tr of trouble grouping this. He does have a supply lead overall. The Zealot's now meandering in. Now the shuttle's moving in, dropping all over those siege tanks. Mine drags everywhere. And that's distracting a lot of the vultures and the rest of this attack force, unfortunately getting funneled a little bit as it's coming across from Doodle. But I think Doodle still might have overwhelming army to push through this otherwise. More units coming in from the upper right. And he's, with just having that 200 supply army, pushing in. Is it going to be enough? The question is, is can he reinforce this now? It looks like... The rest of the siege tanks, I take it back, Frost stands. A lot of his army wiped out, though. Looking for reinforcements to start pouring out for Doodle. So Doodle's still 15 supply up, but keep in mind, a lot of that supply is effectively in gateways being produced right now. Three tanks left standing. Five tanks left standing. At that forward position. A lot of the mines have been taken down, so if Doodle can keep up this pressure, he still might be able to get something accomplished here. But otherwise, yeah, really the big factor here was this bridge. That bridge, Doodle was not able to... He was not able to get his units rapidly across that bridge, and as a result, Siege Tanks just were able to get all sorts of splash damage. Doodle regrouping his shuttles, regrouping... It looks like now he has some High Templar. Psystorm could be a big difference. Frost, in the meantime, has those three bases up and running. He's got three machine shops to keep those tanks pouring out. So, so what? what is this total count? Eight? Eight factories? Eight factories versus five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen gateways. Very much gateway, man. Main is mined out for Doodle, but Doodle is sitting effectively at five bases otherwise. Six bases otherwise? One, two, three, four, five bases otherwise. Here's the thing, though. Level two weapons, sorry, level three weapons just finished for Frost. Level 2 weapons, level 2 armor there for Doodle. So actually doing okay in the overall just pure upgrade versus upgrade battle. But Siege Tanks, particularly with kind of all these map features the way they are, just seem like they're so powerful. And Frost is happy to go ahead and play this, okay, you go ahead and run to my army, I get better exchanges just by sitting where I'm sitting. 9 o'clock base now being established by Frost. Again, setting up for a long-term macro-oriented game. Just Vultures engaging these Dragoons with looks like a handful of Siege Tanks. Not really in position to harass. Looks like a secondary group. Doodle needs to be... He's having trouble getting kind of a cohesive 
army to kind of engage this. Unfortunately, yeah, losing some free dragoons against just the vultures and the mine clearing. Finally, a zealot able to wander up. Now we see the shuttles with the high templar. Let's look for these storms. Good storms on top of those siege tanks. Unfortunately, the, the shuttle being taken out with the rest of the three high templar. Another good size storm, picking that up. But still. Just wandering in slowly with Dragoons. The Zealot's not on top of the siege tanks where they need to be, dealing with something to the north. But able to dive on the rest of the siege tanks that are trying to reinforce, and it looks like they're going to be able to get a lot of SCV kills feasting on this 9 o'clock base. But while that was happening, looks like we had a drop to the north from Frost, working. This should easily be cleaned up as long as Doodle's aware of it with a handful of Zealots. Looks like some Zealots are marching that direction. Some Vultures trying to reinforce to try to make that a little bit more effective. Frost Distance Mining going to end up losing some SEVs as a result. The Zealots wandering in before they're really able to get... I don't think they managed to get, looks like, seven seven pro kills. Honestly, that helped Doodle out because he was a little bit heavy on probes overall. Some Vultures trying to mine the in-between space. So if he decides to do that again, you're going to have the... You're going to be delayed a little bit longer. Very greedily, Frost thinking like, you know what, you don't have enough attack for us to go ahead and hold this, so I'm going to move forward with my Siege Tanks and my Vultures and just retake that 9 o'clock base while you're out of position. Looks like he is, in fact, going to be able to do that. More High Templar, more Zealots, more Dragoons just sitting outside that natural expansion, the dropship making its way back to the main, but while it's doing that, it is going to be able to see, essentially, that Doodle has all of the rest of the bases. Problems for Frost, though. Mains mined out. Natural Expansion's mined out. He's got the inside 8 and 9 o'clock base up and running, but that is basically all he has versus the now 4 bases effectively mining because the main and natural are out for Doodle. And Doodle's continuing to sit at 200 supply where Frost is down to 108, so basically half the supply. So significant lead right there. Maybe with a bad reinforcement... Or Doodle, you know, he's had some trouble keeping this army cohesive and engaging on the multiple fronts that I think he really wants to. Wraith sneaking down actually is probably... Well, it's going to take some damage on that cannon. Psystorm. Just a blanket of Psystorm. Looks like only five SEVs managed to... Oof. So an already battered economy gets even more battered with a decent Psystorm drop. Another drop at the other mining base, and Wow. So, what was that? That was 60 probes down to 30. With two drops, Frost has lost half of his, I think half, of his mining workers. So even more trouble economically. Doodle in strong position now to just finish this match. Another shuttle worth of High Templar. More observers clearing things out. Honestly, he can just start tossing units now. This is brilliant. Throwing the pressure out here. Not letting him get reestablished. Looking for High Templar to drop and the Psy Storms to follow. High Templar are down. Beautiful blanketing Psy Storms over all the Seas Tanks just as the Zealots are starting to move in and get on top of them. There's GG from Frost. Who needs SCVs? Indeed. GG, well played by Doodle to close that out. We'll move on to Game 2 between Frost and Doodle in the winner's match.